Okay, I want to talk about three separate methods that belong to objects. Keys, values, and entries. These three methods let you turn an object into an iterable object. So what is an iterable object? Well, arrays is probably the most common. It's something that you can step through. There's sort of an index, you know, there's 12 items, so it'd be 0 through 11 of the numbers, the indices for that. With an object, like the one I've created here, this sample one, I have a bunch of properties, but there's no way for me to really know which one's first, which one's second, which one's third, and so on. Um, there's no index that says that these are supposed to go in a certain order, and there's no length property. I cannot ask Westross, what's the length of this object? So an iterable object, for example, an array. Strings are also iterables, node lists are iterables, typed arrays, maps, sets, and the arguments keyword that you get inside of a function, those are all iterable objects, and those are all things that you can ask for their length. And we can use a for in loop, or we can use a for of loop as well. For of loops are designed to work with iterable objects. So you've got your property name, the variable name that you're going to declare to use as you go through it, and then the thing that you are going to loop through. So this would be your iterable object here. And for each one of the elements inside there, this would represent each one of them. So this is a reason why you would want to have an iterable. Other reasons for having iterable objects like arrays, it means that we can do things like call the for each method. There's for each methods on uh, arrays, as well as on node lists. So this lets us call a function once for each one of the elements inside there. I can't do that on an object. Um, there's also the other array methods, filter and map and reduce. These are very common, very useful methods that belong to array objects. Now, these three methods right here, object.keys.values.entries, these will create an array from an object. So then we can use the for of loop. We can use the for each filter map and reduce methods. Very useful. Okay, so how do we use them? Very simply, let's say that um, I'm going to create three variables, keys and vowels and entries. These are going to be my three variables. If I call object.keys and I pass in this object here, what keys will do is it's going to give me an array, so an iterable object that contains all of the keys. So Cersei, Area, John, Brienne, Daenerys, Theon, Jorah, and so on. These values will be there. Now if I console.log my variable keys, let's do this. Let's do a comma, not a plus sign. There we go, and we'll run this. There we are. So the keys are this. And notice the square brackets around it. So this is an array of the keys from this object. And because it's an array, it's an iterable object, therefore I can use the for of loop, I can use for each filter map and reduce. Now, I'm not going to get into iterables and creating custom iterable objects. I'll make that in another video. Let's do the second one here, values. And we'll pass in Westeros again. This one is going to, once again, create an array so an iterable object, but it's going to have all the values. So we console.log that one out. And let's comment out the first one here just to save some space. There we are. Now this time I got the values. So if the values are what you want to loop through, this is how you can do it. And then you can use any one of these array methods on it. Now the final one here, entries, very similar, except it's going to give us both the keys and the values back. There we 
we are. We'll run this one. And there's the values. And here's the entries. So the first item, here's the opening square bracket. There's the closing one. For every one of the items inside this array, there's going to be two properties. Property 0 and property 1. 0 will be the key. 1 will be the value. We don't need to know what the names are. Both of them are strings in, these, in this case. So if I were to, at this point, say that I want to console.log, now let's just pick one here. Let's say we want to get snow. So in the array, 0, 1, 2. So I need entries sub 2. That's going to give me this part right here. And then I need part 1. So that will be another set of square brackets there. And we'll once again save some space here. And right here, there it is. So entries sub 2, sub 1, this is the value from right here. So every single element inside the array is an array itself with both parts to it. So that's keys, values, entries. It allows you to turn an object into something that is iterable. So you can use it with all the functionality that comes in JavaScript dealing with iterables. And probably the most useful thing that you're going to find in practical terms will be the ability that you can now use these four methods on whatever came back from whichever of the three methods that you were using. All right, so I hope that helps. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Uh, if you this video, if it, you found it helpful, please share. And as always, thanks for watching.